Six, we're nearing the end of our mission. Ready for one final Kids Club large group countdown sequence? Ready. Okay, give me a go, no go for flight crew. Go flight. Okay, listening ears. We're a go flight. Projector. We're a go flight. Mission control, this is Kids Club. We are good to go. Matthew 6, 10 says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <laughs> well, hello there, Kids Club. Uh, welcome to Mission Control. Today's big idea is let's be generous and what is that noise? Maybe asteroids colliding? Or maybe solar communication interference? That, or an electric explosion in the number two oxygen tank. Well, Houston, we could have a problem. Kids Club, we need to address some technical issues, and while we do that, check out the research study of our founder, Archibald. At Kids Club Mission Control, we hypothesize that something small can have a large impact. For example, here is the moon. It's size over 14 million square miles, but let's look closer. The moon's surface is quite impactful. Now consider this crater. An asteroid hits the moon at 56,000 miles per hour. The resulting explosion was brighter than anything NASA had ever recorded before. How much brighter, you ask? 10x. Did you see it? Did you see the bright? Flashy flash! Eh. The asteroid formed a crater over 60 feet wide. And how big was the asteroid? It weighed 88 pounds. That's right, an asteroid the size of a 10 year old child caused a crater the size of a Ferris wheel. What's the point? You may be young now, and you may think you don't have much to offer, that your gifts are small, maybe even overlooked, but who knows how your small gifts might have a huge impact? Well, maybe impact in a good way. <laughs> so something small, like a small asteroid, can have a huge impact. <laughs> All this talk of impacts and asteroids is making me anxious. Well, keep calm. Let's get the captain online. Maybe they know something we don't. Good idea. Captain Cruz, come in. Come in, Captain. Uh, they're already patched in. Uh, radio mission control? Hmm. Woo. I'm hungry. Are you serious? What? Uh, Captain, we've been going bonkers down here trying to figure out what that awful sound was in our speakers. And we think it was your chips. My chips? Chips? Sorry about that. I was just trying out the new addition from Kids Club Space Force. The Instant Gratifier 200. The Instant Gratifier 200? Yeah, it's a vending machine for the modern space age. I just scan my badge, and I can pretty much get whatever snack I want. I think I'm done with chips. What do I want? No. Nah. I'm glad we solved that mystery, Captain. <laughs> chips? Who knew? Space gum? Uh, yes, please. distress signal from the space station. You look into it, Captain. We've got some research to do. Over and out. Well, now that that's over. What were we talking about today? Uh, consulting Archibald's records. Huh. All it says here at the end is, let's be generous. Which is a great idea, but Archibald was a mathematician. How was this a math problem? I bet the Omnivision can help. Oh, Omnivision, show us some ways the Bible encourages us to be generous. God's story, generosity. So part of God's story is about how he wants us to be generous. And it goes like this. Being generous is all about giving. It means sharing what you have, even when it's tough. It's something God has always asked his disciples or followers to do. 
See, God is generous, and he wants us to be like him. So God taught us how to be generous by being generous to us first. That's why he gave his son Jesus to earth. Jesus left the kingdom of heaven and gave up his life to rescue us so that one day we can be part of God's kingdom and live in it with him forever. Basically, Jesus was also generous because he gave up everything for us. Jesus showed us even more about generosity while he was on earth. In fact, Jesus said we didn't have to be rich to be generous, and we can give away more than money. We can give thirsty people water and hungry people food. We can visit people who are lonely and pray for people who are hurting. He did that all the time. And he said when we do that, it's like we're giving to him. Jesus actually told us that when we're generous, we show him we love him. He said, your heart will always be where your treasure is. That's a fancy way of saying you spend money on what you care about. In the Bible, a rich guy came up to Jesus and asked what he could do to live forever in God's kingdom. Jesus said, go and sell everything you have. Give the money to those who are poor. You will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. Jesus wants us to follow him with our whole hearts and care about him more than anything. Unfortunately, the man went away sad because he couldn't put his treasure in heaven. He loved the stuff he had on earth too much. Another time, Jesus watched people give offerings at the temple. One woman only put in a few small coins, but Jesus told his disciples, that poor widow has put more into the offering box than all the others. They all gave a lot because they are rich, but she gave even though she is poor. She put in everything she had. That was all she had to live on. The widow gave everything to Jesus, just like Jesus gave everything to us. Like the rich guy and the poor widow, all of us have different ways we can give. The Bible says we should give what we want. After all, God loves a cheerful giver. When we share joyfully with others, we're showing love to God. And our generosity shows Jesus how much we love him, just like his generosity shows how much he loves us. And that's the story of generosity. So in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God asks us to be generous. He wants us to be like him. God sent Jesus to us. Jesus gave up his life. Jesus showed us how to give. We can give to things we care about. The rich guy cared about his stuff. The poor woman cared about Jesus. Jesus cares about us. We can love Jesus back by being generous. And that's a part of God's story. We can love Jesus back by being generous. Got it all transcribed. We completed Archibald's records. <laughs> well, that's great. And it's true. Jesus wants us to be generous as a way to show that we love him. And one small act of giving might not change the world, but it could still have an impact. It could change someone's day or even someone's life, even if that someone is you. Uh, what do you mean, May? Oh, well, sometimes when we give, we're the ones who change. We can use giving to grow closer to God and learn to trust him more. That's why Jesus thought the widow giving her two small coins was a bigger deal than the rich people giving all kinds of money. Because Jesus cares more about how much of your heart is his, not how much money you have or don't have. Right. Some people give in order to get something in return. Maybe they think God is like the instant gratifier 200, like a vending machine where you put some money in and in return, God has to give you something like a perfect life or getting famous or powerful. Well, it, it's tricky though, because that is how the world sees generosity. People do give in order to get the perfect life or to get more followers or to get more power, but that is not how following Jesus works. We can be generous because, well, God was first generous to us and we're the best versions of ourselves when we become more like him. Nicely put, Chris. Now, Kids Club, you have some generosity challenges coming up. Mayday, May, this is the captain, over. Talk to us, captain. I know why we got a distress signal from the space station. It's losing pressure. There's a breach somewhere. Precious oxygen is leaking into space. 
Copy that, Captain. Chart a course for the space station. We'll help in any way we can. Copy. I'm on my way. All right. Kids Club, it's time for a break. But when we get back to Mission Control, we're going to see how being generous can affect the whole world. Welcome back, Kids Club. When you practice generosity, you're becoming more like Jesus. That's right. And while you were out, we got Captain Cruz safely to the space station. Let's check in. Captain, what's the situation on the ground? Er, I mean on the space? I'm here. We found the leak. It is worse than we thought. Show us what you're seeing. Switch to my POV. See that leak? The space station is losing oxygen at an unsafe rate. To restore air pressure, the crew needs oxygen from another source. Not only are there people in need, but the station has been in orbit for over 20 years. Decades of valuable research and scientific data could be lost. Another source like a kids club shuttle? That's affirmative control. I'm requesting permission to give 10% of my oxygen to the space station. Very generous of you, Captain. We give what we can, when we can, right? I don't have enough to fix the entire problem, but I have more than I need up here. It takes a lot of trust to be willing to give some away, Captain. You're a hero. They're going to give you the genuine generosity badge for this. Oh, I'm not thinking about all that. Just trying to be more like Jesus. So, my request is approved? Approved. approved. Roger that. I'll get started and keep you posted. Over and out. What an amazing act of generosity. <laughs> you okay there, Chris? I mean, I know anyone can be generous, but still, when you actually see someone being generous, it just gets me, you know? Maybe that's because generosity is part of who we truly are. Humans are the best versions of ourselves when we're generous to others. It changes us, and it changes others. Hey, I have an idea. Let's run a simulation. What would it look like if more and more people practice generosity across the entire world? Let's imagine generosity. Imagine you're in space miles above the Earth. You can see the whole world from right where you are. There's a lot of darkness in the world. People who are starving, suffering from poverty, fleeing war and natural disasters, people who have lost their homes, not sure when they're gonna get their next meal. Not sure if anyone cares about them at all. From where you are, you can see all of that. Now, imagine one act of generosity, something small. It's like a tiny spot of light. Most people wouldn't even notice it. One person gives what they can to someone in need. The light was small at first, but now it's growing. One act of generosity causes another act of generosity, and another, and another. A family is given a meal. A person is given a home, a car, a fresh start. And in turn, they are giving back to others. People are helping one another. Small acts getting bigger and bigger. And it all started from something small. Matthew 5, 14 through 16 says, You are the light of the world. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful! It gets me right here! <laughs> so how about it, Kids Club? Let's be generous! Mission Control! You'll never guess what just happened! Go ahead, Captain! We did it! We gave the space station some of what we had! Not enough to fix everything, but... We? I thought you were the only one up there! That's just it! Once I gave 10% of my oxygen, 
space shuttles from other countries started arriving to share what they could do. 10% from all of us totaled to over 100%. Oh. <laughs> I haven't seen this generosity from all over the world since... Well, I guess this is what the kingdom of God is supposed to look like. Humans, when they act like Jesus, really are capable of amazing things. I think I know exactly what you mean, Captain. Well done. Way to be an example to others. No, oh, that reminds me. I've sent a mission to the Dodometer. Is it there yet? Yes. We have a mission for the week. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to give something away this week. Could be a toy, money, food, maybe even your time. Let's be generous. Well, what do you think, Kids Club? Will you execute on the mission or not? <laughs> That's what I thought. Let's do it. This message will oh, self-destruct right. in T minus five. Of course it's gonna self-destruct. So I'm ready. <laughs> It's okay. Good thing I brought my tambourine. <laughs>